it's quite clear that an appropriately configured AI could be much better at you know political and economic decision making than than human beings. It's been really interesting to see more cross pollination between AI people and and blockchain people. You'll see the emergence of an artificial super intelligence which can rewrite its own program code at will and is vastly more intelligent than human beings. I think we're now just at the beginning of a series of AI revolutions. We're seeing now what I'd call a narrow AI revolution where AI is doing certain highly specific things very well and then Next comes what you'd call the AGI, Artificial General Intelligence Revolution, where AI has learned to generalize and reason, adapt to new circumstances, you know, more like people do. Following that, you'll see the emergence of an artificial superintelligence, which can rewrite its own program code at will and is vastly more intelligent than human beings. I mean, this is almost certain to happen now, given the amount of energy going behind AI research and development. But an open question is, you know, how, how beneficial is this transition to human beings, right? I mean, are we just going to replace ourselves with some superhuman supermind? Or are we going to, you know, usher in a, a new era where AIs and humans you know, live together peacefully and humans have greater fulfillment due to the help of the AIs, while the AIs are also off, you know, doing their own thing. And this is where I think blockchain can play a key role, because it, if you look at the AI scene on the globe now, there's a few large corporations and a couple large governments that are hiring most AI researchers and controlling most of the, of the AI development. And this probably isn't the optimal configuration either for you know people's general welfare in the near term nor for creating sort of the the baby version of the emerging super intelligence right so if you could have a more decentralized democratic participatory framework in in, in, in which the AI was you know guided by everyone who's putting data into it everyone who's using it everyone who's developing for it, then I think this can, this can lead to a more beneficial transition from narrow AI to AGI, general intelligence, to, to super intelligence. I mean, th this is why my colleagues and I launched the Singularity Net project, which is a blockchain-based platform for, for AI. We launched the beta for this in January, and we're now you know, working to apply this to a whole bunch of different problems across different markets and to get more developers to put AI code into it and, you know, grow a decentralized AI network toward the goal of creating a beneficial technological singularity. It's pretty clear to me that the complexity of modern societies now goes beyond the ability of any human being to really track or comprehend or, or control. So it's, it's quite clear that an appropriately configured AI could be much better at you know, political and economic decision making than, than human beings. The values that you use to guide decision making are a different thing than the specific policy decisions, however. So the way I think government will evolve in the next few decades is humans set the value system and then AIs figure out how to optimize policy to, to achieve the, the values that humans have specified. Because what to value, it's sort of a subjective thing, right? And, and different human cultures will make different decisions in, in, in that regard. But it's pretty clear that most, let's say all nations on the planet now, they're not really well 
configured according to the value system of, of anybody, right? I mean, of the average person or even of the, the elites running them. This is partly because of human greed, selfishness, and perversity and, and whatnot. But it's also just, we sort of go on historical momentum and we're not really that clever at how to organize our own, our own society and our, and our own economic systems. I mean, like something as simple as schools, it's very, very clear by now there are much better ways to educate our kids than, you know, sitting in a room all day with other kids of the same age group and having them do stuff by rote, writing down a piece of paper. But, you know, rolling out a, a radically more progressive and better way to educate children, it's taking decades and decades for our institutions to slog through that process, right? And, you know, this is because of various human interests in, in various groups being at, at odds with each other and a lot of friction friction in, in, in the works, right? I mean, mostly our politicians these days are talking heads anyway, and there's armies of policy experts behind the scenes who are figuring out, you know, what policies actually might make sense and what policies might appeal to the voting public. So. Probably what will first happen is you'll have an AI policy wonk that just figures out what should the policy be. And, you know, things like modern financial regulations, the governments today are not as smart as the banks, and they're outsmarted by the banks. And AI working for the government on financial regulation will be much more interesting. And probably with update regulations for things like tokens, much, much better than is being done now. Medical regulation also, I mean... We're very slow at approving new therapies. Things like gene therapy we're paranoid about and we're very slow at approving things that actually would benefit people a, a, a great deal. Just it takes a long time for these new technologies to sink into, into the relevant human brains, right? So I think AI policy wonks will be good all around and could accelerate the adaptation of policy to new technological innovations, which will become more and more and more important as technological advance ex ex accelerates. Now, will that eventually turn to, okay, AI is not just advising on policy, but an, an AI is, is also the, you know, the talking head and, and the baby kisser that, that goes around getting elected? Why not? But that, that would require a legal change, right? But what could happen without any legal change is AI is deciding everything and the human is just collecting the paycheck, loafing in the resort, riding on the jet, giving the speeches and, 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 and shaking hands, right? And that's, that, that's almost, almost certain to occur, actually. But yeah, w once that happens, eventually people will realize the humans are just puppets and you, you, might, you might as well have, have a better looking puppet that, that, that never gets old and have the AI be your, be your elected official after all, right? right? I think this time around, the Malta blockchain summit has become more of an AI and blockchain summit. And I mean, I, I myself recruited, uh, you know, 10 or 15 folks from the AI world to come here who aren't normally involved with, with blockchain conferences or, or the blockchain world. And it's been really interesting to see more cross pollination between AI people and, and blockchain people. And it will be interesting to see to what extent this is, is cashed out in terms of real AI activity beyond conferences taking place in, in Malta. I mean, Malta has been a, a blockchain hub, which is, which is awesome. Will it become an AI hub as well? And then maybe the world hub for AI meets blockchain. I mean, it, it's, it's possible. But there's a number of, of things that have to happen for that for that to to occur, and so, you know, I'm I'm interested to work with the Malta government and with local people in the tech and business community to sort of nudge toward, you know, real practical action beyond conferences to really get AI meets blockchain action going here. One very interesting area has to do with DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations. If you have a company 
which has no humans involved. Maybe humans wrote the code, but the company is just a bunch of computer code. It's a bunch of scripts running on servers. They provide services, they collect money, they rent server time. Maybe they hire human lawyers and accountants when they need to to do business for them. If you have a company that's just run by AI, it's only code, and I could write one of those right now, can it register itself as a company? Can it get a bank account? Can it defend itself in court without needing any human supervision, but just humans as its, its subcontractors, right? And we're discussing with folks in the Malta government about potentially you know, having a regulatory code that enables these decentralized autonomous organizations like purely AI-based companies to have real legal status here. And this becomes quite interesting and it could tie in with something like Sophia and other robots as well. Imagine if each robot had a DAO, a scripted company associated with it, where the robot is owned by that company. So instead of buying a Sophia robot, hypothetically in this possible future, you could lease the robot from the DAO, the decentralized company that owns the robot, right? And then, you know, there, there, there's, no peop there's no people involved, right? I mean, uh, some people might have founded that company and then moved on, and it's just an autonomous entity, right? So if this is the future, and if Malta became the first place to really make a systematic regulatory framework allowing this sort of corporate entity to to operate that, that this will be will be quite interesting right so there there, there there are many new frontiers here the intersection of blockchain AI and legal and regulatory innovation